Good morning, church. How many of you are determined to go on? That, that, that's kind of weak this morning. How many of you are truly determined to go on? But, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And I'm so grateful that I'm standing here this moment. I thank God for the privilege and the blessed opportunity to, to have this preaching moment. Because as I, I sat in this pulpit, the devil tried to get me. <laughs> Muscle spasms in both my legs. Blood pressure just shot up to 190. But I'm determined to stay because I serve a God who's able. So I don't know about you, Alfred Street. I'm determined. <laughs> I'm determined to stand this morning. I give honor to, unto whom honor is due. First, giving honor to God, who is indeed the head of my life. I give honor also to the shepherd of this house in his absence, my pastor, the Honorable Dr. Howard John Wesley. Let's give it up for our pastor. I'm also so grateful. I'm so grateful that as I look to my left, I see Ms. Joyce Peterson. For those of you who know, the former pastor of this church is my daddy. He treated me like his daughter, and when he was here in his final days, he would always sit over in his wheelchair to the left of the pulpit. And so as I stand this morning and I look left, I'm so grateful that I see a Peterson in the house. But lest I hold you too long, there is a word from the Lord this morning. If you will stand as you are able and turn with me to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth through the sixth verse. Say amen when you have it. Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth through the sixth verse, and it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Lord, I ask at this preaching hour that your folks see less of me and more of thee. Yeah. This is thy servant's prayer. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yeah. There's a word this morning, and I'd like to tag this text. I trust God. Yeah. I trust God. For life, as you know, raises many questions for us. Some people spend their entire life, Uncle Larry, searching for the true meaning of life and their purpose in it. Several years ago, an entire genre of literature was created for folks running around trying to find out what their purpose in life was. A whole cottage industry exploded around the concept of identifying and recognizing what? A purpose-driven life. Some of the most frequently asked questions in Christian literature is, 
How can we trust God during difficult times? How can we trust him when our world is falling apart all around us? How can we trust God when we have more questions than answers? How can we trust God when we see bad things happen to good people? When evil seems to be gaining on every hand? How can we trust God when there is more rent than money at the end of the month? When retirement savings are gone and we still have many more years to live on? How can we trust God when health insurance comes to an end and we can't qualify for the marketplace health care insurance? How can we trust God when it seems like the earth all around us is sinking sand yes. and the walls of our security are tumbling down. Yes. Well, preacher, tell me how do I trust God yes. when the doctor says my condition is terminal and the fire marshal says it's time to get out of here and evacuate. When the phone rings late in the midnight hour and it is worse than you can imagine. When life is hard and you can't see an end at the light of the tunnel. What do I do and who do I trust? Well, I stopped by 301 South Alfred Street to tell you that you can trust God. And in my, in my period of thoughtful reflection and prayer as I prepared for this morning's preachment. God directed me to the book of Proverbs, the wisdom chapter. He directed me to give you words of encouragement and guidance that will help you along life's journey. It says trust in the Lord and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, not some of them, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Now this book of Proverbs contains God's worldly wisdom for us and like no other book in the Bible, it that articulates profound theological truths and lengthy narratives of triumphs and failures or prophetic preachings to a disobedient people. Proverbs simply tells us how to live in God's pathway. In short, some scholars have said that Proverbs is a short how-to manual on how to make it to the other side. And it tells us first that we must live with this little gem, that we must first have the fear of the Lord in our hearts. And so this morning, as we look at the text, there are three commandments that are found in these verses. The first one says to trust God. And so... When we think about that word trust, it means that we have to rely on and depend on something. In each of our lives, no matter who we are or how religious or holy we think we are, there are circumstances and situations, Siobhan, that calls us to question God. And when we look at the world events that are unfolding across the length and breadth of our world, we look at the nightly news and we hear about earthquakes and, and droughts and mudslides, military-based shootings, kidnapped children, missing airplanes, unrest in foreign lands, and waves of suicide on college campuses, and the list just goes on and on. Our worries often overwhelm our minds with such palpable uncertainty 
of what tomorrow will bring concerning our jobs, the government, world peace, and even our own lives. The worries and cares of this world can become so overwhelming that we constantly are searching for solutions to problems that don't, don't even yet exist. How many of you have found yourself in a situation where you said, what if this happens today? And then and, and, and what if this happens tomorrow? So much so that it clutters our mind and we become paralyzed and we can't focus on nothing because the weight of the world is on our shoulders. And then when we press our way through and look back over it, we say, well, what were we worrying about? What was all the commotion about? We got ourselves all worked up for nothing because we have forgotten the spiritual walk with God. We've lost that inner voice with us that tells us to trust in the Lord with everything. And when we're going through situations that he will be there and meet us at our point of need. In the biblical text, the word trust is used 130 times. In Hebrew, this word trust means to Lean in with your full body to rest your full weight on it. In our thinking, the word trust means to rely or to have confidence in. That's our human understanding of this word. But that Hebrew word is much stronger. It's the idea that we can stretch out our bodies on a bed and rest on a hard surface because we know we got something that's going to hold us up. In the South, we call that walking heavy. <laughs> Stephanie Mills had a song that said, put your body into it. <laughs> Lay your whole weight on it. To trust in the Lord, we've got to depend on him with everything. And you know, when we think about that in our Christian walk, what does it really mean to trust God? Yeah. Trust, I believe, is the outpouring of faith. Trust is faith and hope in action. Because when we trust God, we show him that our faith in him is real. God does not call us to have a piecemeal faith, but he asks us to have a complete trust in him and him alone. And so I want you to understand this morning that you can't just pick and choose when you gonna trust God. <laughs> uh, have you ever thought about it this way? Well, what and who do you trust? You trust your employers to pay you every two weeks for your wages. You trust the doctors when they prescribe your medication. You trust your creditors that when you make a purchase that you're going to get what you paid for. You trust the banks with your money. You trust the public education school with your children. You trust your lives when you get in your cars, your trains, and your automobiles, but all those things can fail you. And you often forget about the man who has never failed you yet. Uh, because employers don't always pay. And as some of you in the DMV know, the government will shut down. Uh, we tell our children to trust us and that we trust them when we send them out on their way. Oh, and then we trust that TV DVR on Thursday nights. <laughs> that it's going to tape at 10 o'clock that little show that somebody likes called Scandal. Uh, we trust the pilots, the maintenance crews, and the air traffic controllers when we fly. And if we trust all these earthly things, 
Why can't you trust a heavenly father who sits high and looks low? Now, why is this God we serve worthy of our trust? Psalm says the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. But, you know, in order to trust God, y'all ought to know God. <laughs> Some of you don't trust him because you don't have a relationship with him. Y'all ought to say amen. Because for somebody, he's been Jehovah Jireh, their provider. For somebody, he's been Jehovah Nisi, their banner. For somebody, he's been Jehovah Rapha, their healer. All we have to do is he's been there for you. You know that in times of darkness, in times of temptation, and in times of affliction, we can do what? We can trust God. So walk with me for a few moments during the biblical or down through the biblical passages of history for a few examples of some saints who have trusted God. If I call some witnesses today, they will tell you that they trusted God. Esther comes to mind and she trusted God for favor on her life. When she said, if I perish, let me perish. But I'm going to see that king. Shadrach, Meshach, and a big Negro not only believed that he was real, but they said boldly that even if he don't save us, even if he lets us die, we will still trust God. Oh, but David comes to mind. Oh, David comes to mind when we talk about a man who trusted God. For in Psalms 18, he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortune. Psalms 23, he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalms 24 said, The Lord, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and everything that dwells in it. Psalms 27 said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Psalms 34 said, If I bless the Lord at all times and keep his praises in my mouth, that he will deliver me from all of my fears. Psalms 37 says, When I trust God, <laughs> And I do good. And when I delight myself in him and him alone, he will give me the desires of my heart. But David went a little bit further when he said, fret not yourselves because of evildoers. Hashtag don't be scared of your enemy because the grass withers and it will soon pass away. Psalms 121 says, when the going gets to me, all I have to do is look unto the hills for with cometh my help, because my help comes from the Lord. I don't know about you this morning, but I've never <laughs> seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Who out for street? Who are you trusting? <laughs> Who have you put your faith in? The second command of that says we need to lean. 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 And not into our own understanding. Which means we can't depend on our own instincts. Our own knowledge, pedigree, and social economic status. To evaluate and assess the vicissitudes. I like that word. <laughs> the vicissitudes and the circumstances of our lives. So the second question I raise for you, Alfred Street, this morning is one, who are you trusting? But two, who are you leaning on? Oh, I've had times in my life when I, when I felt all alone and, and like no, felt like nobody cared. <laughs> 
Just here recently, I've been in the leadership of the nation's oldest and largest civil rights organization now more than 30 years. Uh, but I've had some friends here recently <laughs> who've turned their backs on me, who lied on me and tried to destroy my character and my integrity. But it was during those difficult times that I learned Alfred Street what my faith was really made of. I had to put my faith and trust in an almighty God. I had to get down on my knees with knees bent and body bowed and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee for no other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, where the shall I go? But I'm so glad, <laughs> I'm glad this morning that I got a testimony. Because <laughs> I serve a God who let me know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy, unspeakable joy cometh in the morning. For the God I serve he is amazing. Let me tell you, he told me that if I just hold <laughs> my peace and let him fight my battle, be still and know, Rosalind, that I am God and I will fight your battles and victory shall be mine. Is there anybody here at Alfred Street who knows what I'm talking about? When your enemies come to eat up your flesh, oh, y'all ain't been through nothing. Y'all ain't had nobody talk about y'all. Y'all ain't had no loved ones walk out on you. Y'all ain't had no one turn their back on you. Oh, when your enemies come up to eat up your flesh, they stumbled and fell because they didn't know. <laughs> Hashtag. Favor ain't fair. <laughs> Somebody ought to shout right now. Somebody ought to shout right now. Because when God sets a table before you in the presence of your enemies and he lets your cup run over, not because you're so worthy, not because you deserve it, but it's something that's called grace and mercy. Wish I had somebody in this room in the sanctuary who knew a little something, something about grace and mercy. Y'all, y'all ain't always been sitting up here in this country club called Alfred Street Missionary Baptist Church. Y'all ain't always been in church. I seen some of you in the clubs one night. Seen some of you say some words that you shouldn't say. Oh, y'all better come on and go with me. Mm. <laughs> when God sets a table before you in the presence of your enemies and when he lets your cup run over because he's telling your enemies that I got you, <laughs> I see you <laughs> and you're safe <laughs> in my arms or oh, you can't mess with that kind of grace. I need some saints who know what I'm talking about this morning. Y'all better say amen if you, if you know what I'm talking about. Because somebody knows that he's been a friend when you didn't have no friend. <laughs> and he stuck closer than a brother. Oh, won't he do it this morning? I'm talking, I'm telling you this morning. Not about something that somebody told me. <laughs> I'm talking about something I had to live through. Oh, but I feel like shouting right now. Y'all better hold my mule. It's something when you see other folks go through some stuff. But when you got to go that same path, it's something a little different then. Your, 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 your lens get a little different then and you have a little bit more empathy. Cause you know, hmm, just don't feel too good. <laughs> But you know the word tells us that we can cast all our cares unto the Lord for he, he cares for us. But, but too many of us have given up on God because we mistakenly believe that we made it all by ourselves. Come on, y'all. 
It's often too many of us climb the ladder of success. And when we reach the top of that ladder, we find that we've been what? <laughs> Leaning against the wrong wall. Have mercy, somebody. Now, you know, sometimes our natural, our natural inclination is to act on our own humanly impulse. Because we think that we know better than God. You know, we know more better than him. And we fail to understand that our wisdom is weak and unreliable. Like a worn out walking stick, when we lean on it too hard, it's going to fail and break on you. We must realize that not every good idea is a God idea. Y'all better tweet that. Not every good idea is a God idea. Because sometimes, every time, all the time, we need to submit our decisions to the Lord. We must learn to practice to place our trust in God and rely on his promises. You know, you're not going to always understand everything that he's doing or what is going on because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But we must believe and trust in him. Lean not until our own understanding. And so once you find out and answer the question, who are you trusting? Who are you leaning on? The third and final command for us is to what? Acknowledge him. The Hebrew word for acknowledgement means to know him deeply and intimately. <laughs> Uh, like a husband knows a wife, you know, you can complete each other's sentences. We can translate this by saying, in all your ways, y'all ought to know God. It's the kind of knowing that comes with a personal relationship and daily interaction with him over time, over an extended period of time. Because the God we serve wants to be involved in every part of our lives. So my final question to you is who are you trusting? Who are you leaning on? But that third thing is who gets the credit? Who gets the credit for what's going on in your life? When I was doing my research, Dr. Judy, for this sermon, I found a concept that was called the sacred secular divide you know this is a theory that there's a dividing wall between what church folks do on Sunday and how they live their secular life on Monday and they think it's okay to have a sacred <laughs> and a secular life to be with God you, you, you notice I said church folks I ain't say Christians uh, uh, the God, because God cares about what you do on Sunday morning in church. But he also cares what you do on Saturday night in the club and on Monday morning in your office. This whole sacred, secular divide is the assumption that God cares about who you give your money to. But not how you earn your money in the first place. I know y'all gonna get quiet on that part. It's the assumption that God cares about which church you go to, but not whose house you living in. Woo! It's the assumption that God cares about Bible study, but not about your television viewing and your internet relationships. Oh, y'all better come on and go with me. We are comfortable as church folk trying to divide our lives into the what? The sacred over here when I'm in Alfred Street and over here when I'm with y'all at the club. Give me some. <laughs> but God wants, God wants, I ain't wasn't trying to indict you. <laughs> God wants. But somebody here needs to give a high five. God wants 
to tear down these dividing walls and be the God of all of our lives because the sacred and the secular belongs to him. It all falls under the cross. He wants to be with us on our entire journey through life. That's why he says, trust in me. Don't think you can do it by yourself. Have a relationship with me and give me my props aired now and then. Oh, the results of this intimate relationship with God allows him to make our paths straight. How many of you have gotten into a situation when you ain't understand what was going on? But after you got there, and after you thought about what was going on, you said, what? God knew what he was doing all the time. Anybody, anybody been in that situation? When you thought when the boo left you, you was going to lose your mind. But you find out that he had somebody right around the corner for you. When you lost that job, you thought that you wasn't going to make it, and you got a phone call just the next day with a better job. I submit to you this morning that when man closes the door, God will, he'll open a window. But all we have to know that in all our ways, we must acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Because when I think <laughs> about the goodness of God and all he's done for me, He's done for me not only in my secular life, but what he's done for me in my sacred life. My soul cries out, hallelujah. I want to thank God for saving me. Because God deserves all of our worship this morning. He deserves all of our praise. He deserves all the credit. Now let's give the Lord some praise this morning for all that he's done in our lives. Because when we give the Lord credit, he will direct our path. We can rest assured that when we fail, he'll lift us up. Oh, when we are weak, he will be strong. When we are lost, he is our way. And when we're hurt, he will heal us. I don't know about you this morning, Alfred Street, but I trust God. All you have to do is put your trust in God. Don't lean on others for support based on your own human understanding. God will direct your path if you just turn it over to him. In short, as Jack, Dr. Judy says, all you got to do in short is what? Know me. That's one circle. Spend time with me. That's the second circle. Put me first in every area. That's the third circle. And you know when you do that, it's complete because I'll take care of everything else from there. Yeah. Know me, spend time with me, and put me first in your life. Will you do that this morning out for street? Are you prepared to give God that kind of secular, sacred devotion? The same God that spoke to Paul in the midst of his storm will speak to you this morning, right in the midst of your struggle. The same God that revived David in the day of his adversity will also revive you. I don't know about you, but I'm trusting God all the way to Calvary. Oh, in this Lenten season, we're all the way to Calvary. Oh, because there was a man who came down through 42 generations. He was born in a manger. They called him Jesus, Mary's baby. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind and he healed those who didn't know and gave them direction. Oh, you have to do is trust God all the way to Calvary. You know, Jesus had to trust God. He didn't understand all that was going on when he was making his trek. But he said, 
I trust you, Lord. When Peter denied him, he said, I trust God. When Judas betrayed him, betrayed him, he said, I trust God. When the disciples walked out on him, he said, I trust God. Can you see our Savior as he was hung up on that cross, crucified? He suffered, bled, and died. But early on the third day, early on the third day, God got up victorious over death and the grave. I don't know about you, but I'm going to trust God. Because the Bible says that we can trust him if we put our hope and our faith in him. Nobody knows, Alfred Street, what tomorrow will bring. In this life, there's one thing that you can be sure of. That the God we serve is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's the same God forevermore. So even when life happens to you, when you can't trace God, know that you can trust God. You can trust him to be faithful to his word. It may be difficult sometime, but I'm going to trust in the Lord until I die. There is a song as I bring this message to a close that sums up the message for this morning. It says, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from his sunshine, for his skies may turn gray. I don't worry about the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today he walks beside me, for he and he alone knows what lies ahead. That's guidance for you this morning. Because many things about tomorrow, we will never understand. But we know who holds tomorrow. And we also know who holds our hand. 